Hey there and welcome to another edition of Coatsense Workshop. In this video I'm covering two different aiming techniques as well as a simple trick to help you never miss and build your confidence when taking the shot. In the last video I covered eight tips to ensure that your gun was shooting straight. I suggest if you haven't seen that, go and check it out in the link above over here. The link is also in the description below. Make sure that your gun is shooting 100% straight. Right, let's climb into it. Before we go any further, if you don't have an issue with aiming and you are dead accurate, don't watch this video. Changing the way you shoot can be a long, lengthy, frustrating process. So if you've got your guns dialed in and you're shooting straight, don't watch this video. Take the eight tips on ensuring your gun is accurate from the previous video, stick with that. Even thinking about a different approach can screw up with your mind and your shots. Let's look at some aiming techniques and how and when to use them. Essentially guys take two different types of shots. Either they aim down the barrel or they just point and shoot. The point and shoot relies more on instinct and you don't aim at all. From what I've noticed, the guys who use the point and shoot technique, they're normally hunting on the reef and where they're um, shooting fish in close quarters with you know, the fast moving. They don't have time to lift the gun up and aim down the barrel. And the guys aiming down the barrel are more the guys um, shooting guns in the open water or with very big guns like blue water hunting where you've got loads of time to line up down, down the gun and take the shot. Let's look at both techniques and how to master them plus the pros and cons of both. Uh, let's start with the most common and that's going to be aiming down the gun. Uh, this technique is pretty self-explanatory. You would aim like any gun or rifle using the line of sight down the gun at the target. Most guys, they aim over the top of their gun by first placing the spear tip on the target and then lifting up the handle and taking the shots once everything's lined up. Another alternative to this is to come in from the side horizontally so you'd, you'd place the spear tip on the fish and then you'd bring it in from the side. Um, this is really good for fish swimming in from your right hand side or if you're left handed coming in from the left. This is actually quite handy because you can be sure of the height of your shot when coming in from the side. It's 100% guaranteed that you've got your, your height um, right and if you're checking your gun to see if it's shooting the right height, that's a good way to do it. But either way, you're shooting the gun like a rifle, you're looking down the gun and taking the shot. The pros to this technique is that it's pretty easy to master and if you have the time and an easy target, you can line up and make sure of your shot. The cons of aiming down your gun like a rifle is it can take too long. In blue water situations where your target is cruising along like Spanish mackerel or wahoo, these are good examples, you have loads of time, you can line up easily on that fish and take the shot, especially if you have a big gun. But when you're rushed or don't have time, you might land up squeezing the trigger when you're not 100% certain of your shot. When aiming down your gun, your gun is extended out in front of you. So if there's a shoal or fast moving fish, you're having to like track your gun through the water to keep on target. And it's difficult to even change target, let's say you're in a shoal. And when you start doing this, you're also making big clumps and movements. It's, it's just a bad habit and difficult to actually make those subtle changes. I see a lot of guys, they, they'll go, they'll dive down, they'll put their gun out in front of them to line up on the first fish they see and then they look around they go, oh there's another fish and now they're, they're either pulling their gun back and trying to make those adjustments. That's when you can make mistakes and you're not really efficient in the water. Having your gun out in front of you when you're diving is a very, very bad habit. You know, this only limits your maneuverability and fluidness in the water and increases your profile. If you think about it, if you've got a big gun and your gun is extended out, you are almost twice as long as you would be if you didn't have your gun out. You know, so fish also feel your intention. So if you've got your gun out pointing at them, they can, a lot of fish feel like, a, for lack of a better word, like self-conscious and they kind of go, hey, I don't like that. The guys in the med, especially um, there where the fish are, are really difficult to hunt, they believe that the fish will um, stay a certain distance from your closest point. And if you look at a flopper, that's my closest point. And that's, this is a tiny little gun, that's a, a meter further away. So that fish is gonna be your whole gun distance and shaft distance further away from you than if you kept your gun close into you until the last moment. So if you, 
hunt with your gun out in front of you. All you're doing is you're keeping the fish further away, you're um, increasing your profile and making it more difficult to maneuver in the water. Another negative to aiming down your gun is that you're so focused on aiming that you forget to actually lock your elbow. This is something I found myself doing uh, mostly when I'm on the bottom hunting on the reef and I'm lying on the bottom looking up at a fish taking a shot and I'll do something like this and my elbow's bent and then when you take the shot there's this recoil. Um, that recoil takes up a lot of energy out of your gun and also that recoil is never in a perfect flat plane so it's going to, um, the projection of your shaft is going to it's going to affect the projection of your shaft and that's going to affect your accuracy. So that's one of the negatives of aiming down your gun is that you can actually be so focused on aiming that you forget to either lock, lock your elbow and your, and your wrist when taking the shot. Another potential issue with aiming down the gun is that as you take the shot, your gun actually obscures your target and you cannot see the exact spot that you're going to, um, you, you want to place the shaft. So this can be an issue. So you, what happens is you land up just aiming at the general area on a fish as opposed to a specific spot. You might have had that specific spot in mind when you started to aim, but at, you, at that point when you're taking the shot, you cannot see that spot because the gun is in the way. Another thing is that it's also easy to over aim because of that. You know, you, you, you're aiming down your gun, you can't see where it is, so you like, you, you second guess yourself, you look, you know, and as soon as you start um, second guessing yourself, that's when something changes, the fish moves, you know, or you're not sure about your shot and you end up just squeezing off the trigger be because you're feeling rushed or you're under pressure. I'm sure if you've done any amounts of diving, um, you would have experienced that to some degree. You know, you aim, you, you're lining up on a fish and then you go, mm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And then you go, flip, I've got to take the shot. You take the shot and you fluff it. And it was just purely because you're taking too long aiming. Let's look at the point and shoot. The point and shoot method doesn't rely on aiming, but rather hand-eye coordination um, to place the shot. It's pretty much the same as taking a, a pole or a stick and coming from the hip and pointing at a target. And then if you look down, you'll find that you're pretty much on target. It's, um, it's quite uncanny how easy that is. So just take a, take a, a, a pole or a stick um, right now where you're sitting, point it at something, and then look down and see if you are on target. And you'll find that nine times out of 10, you're actually pretty close. This shot is particularly good when you're hunting on the bottom, where you need to keep your gun concealed for as long as possible and you want to just reach up and take the shots, especially at fish that are um, coming in and approaching you. The main pros of the pointed shoot is that you keep your gun concealed until the very last moment before taking the shot. Um, this allows the fish to come in closer. Most guys hold the gun upside down and keep it underneath them. This is why non-ergonomic handles are actually better because you want to be able to have this grip slide around in your hand um, like this. So you go from one position to the other with, with one sleek movement. Anyway, this is very different to when you've got your gun out in front of you and you're tracking, waiting for the moment to take the shots. When you're keeping your gun underneath you, you are anticipating when that best moment's going to be. Okay, you see I've come up to the ledge, there's some bronzies in the distance. They're too far away for the shot, so I have to close the gap and point and shoot. Shot was nice and far. Let's watch that again in slow mo. I've actually seen these bronze bream from um, further back, approached the ledge. I knew that they were too far away from the ledge, so I'd have to get over the ledge and take the shot. So you see, as I approach the ledge, the gun's drawn back in. Wait for my opportune time, come over. You see them start starting to move. Close the gap, shoot, and you see where that line was just past single wrap range, so good range. Not an easy shot. 
In the beginning, you might uh, blow a few shots, but as you get better at anticipating those situations um, and looking for those opportunities, you're gonna become better and better at taking those shots. And I believe that's what makes um, a really good spear fisherman, is the ability to pick out the, the right moment to actually take their gun, put it out, and make a good clean shot. The point to shoot also means that as you take the shot, you're extending with your arm. So you're gonna come from here and you're gonna um, be extending as you take that shot. So this means that in most cases, your elbow and your wrist and your shoulder, they all um, activated and actually, you know, they're gonna be able to hold the recoil of the gun, even if your elbow is slightly bent because you're in a forward motion as you take that shot. It's unlike that example I showed you earlier, where you're on the bottom and you're aiming like this, your wrist and your elbow are not actually engaged. Your focus is on maneuvering the gun and that's where you, you, you land up with that horrible recoil that sends your shaft flying in all directions. But for me, what, probably the biggest pro to the point and shoot um, is that your focus is actually on the fish and the spots on the fish that you wanna take, take or place the shot. Um, as opposed to um, aiming down the barrel of my gun. I find when I'm aiming down the barrel of the gun, it's more difficult to pick a point on the fish. When you're pointing and shooting, you're actually pointing at a specific spot. And once you get this technique right, you'll find that your shot placement is going to be a whole lot better. Okay, so what are the cons with a point and shoot? Well, firstly, if you're using big clumpers and wooden guns or even long guns like a one a 130 or 140 like Rob Allen type gun, it's, very, it's more difficult to point and shoot with bigger guns. Well, that's just in, in my experience. Another downside to the point and shoot um, technique is if you miss, it's almost impossible to tell um, if it was you or the gun that missed the shot. So um, when you're aiming down the barrel of the gun, um, you can almost be 100% certain if it was you're aiming badly or it was the gun. But uh, point and shoot, it's almost impossible to tell, and that can be a real problem. So which is better, the point and shoot or the aiming down the barrel technique? Well, actually neither. I like to use a combination of both techniques depending on the situation. The point and shoot is by far more difficult, and I have to constantly re be reminding myself to um, practice that, keep my, keep my gun in, and try use um, that technique on the build up as I'm shooting a fish. It, um, it just allows me to be a better hunter. Often what I'll end up doing is I will try and anticipate the shot like I would as if I'm gonna actually do a pure point and shoot. But then at that last moment, as I've drawn out, I'll just do a subtle aim down, down the gun before I, I take the shot. But either way, you know, sometimes in quick situations, because you keep on practicing it, I've taken shots where you just take shots off the fly and it's amazing how accurate you can actually be um, the more you practice the points and shoot. Here we have some cobia coming in. I'm using a 120. You can see I start thinking about the shot straight away and then I keep the gun back. Chase a little, trying to work out which is the best shot and best fish to take. And there's the point and shoot. Nice easy shot, wasn't too far away. Okay, here's a really handy tip and this is gonna help you be more accurate in the water. This is something I learned a few years ago and I just call it the poke and shoot. It's a technique that I've subsequently taught to guys new in the sport, even some old school guys stuck in their ways. Um, this is a surefire way to improve your accuracy and grow in confidence. It also helps you move away from relying on aiming down the, the side of your gun or down the barrel of your gun in the aiming technique and move into a more um, point, a point and shoot sort of styled shots and as well as a host of other good things. How the poke and shoot technique works is right at the moment when you're about to take the shots, you shift your focus from your gun to the exact point on the fish and you imagine that you're gonna poke or push your shaft through that spot on the fish and take the shot. This isn't a, um, a, a hard or, or quick movement, it's more of a, a controlled um, push. That's how I kind of see it in my head. You know, you, you're lining up on the fish, you're picking your spot, you, at that point when you go, okay, this is the time I wanna take, take the shot, 
you're pushing your shaft through that spot in the fish as you squeeze the trigger. Here's an example of uh, where I'm clearly aiming on a Spanish mackerel. You see, as I take the shot, I put, do the poke. Let's watch that in slow-mo. Extend out. Poke and shoot. The poke and shoot actually takes the, the point and shoot and adds an aiming, compon aiming component to it. It's like aiming without aiming. All you're doing now is as you're doing that, you are just projecting your shaft through that spot on the fish as you take the shot. And um, it's amazing how lethal you'll be with the shot. And like I explained before, you can use it with aiming down the gun. You can, and I try to do this all the time. It, what it does do when, you, when you're aiming down the barrel of your gun, at that point when you go, I'm gonna take the shot, you're just pushing the shaft through the, the spot in the fish. It's lining up your, um, your elbow, your wrist, your shoulder. So that's taken care of. And you've also um, shifted the focus from your gun to the exact spots on the fish you want the shaft to land. And that's going to help improve your shots, um, whether you're aiming down the barrel of the gun or you're using the points and shoot. There's a shot where I'm aiming on a Spanish mackerel. And as I take the shot, I do the poke. Let's slow that down so you can see what happens. So as I take the shot, you can see I push forward with the gun and pull the trigger. I also find the whole emotional action helps with committing to the shot. While you're aiming down the barrel, you can take the shot at any time and it can be difficult to know exactly when to, to pull the trigger. And this indecision um, can lead you to doubting the shot and that, that's that second guessing yourself. When you're poking your spear through the um, specific spots on the fish, you are being very decisive. It's, um, you're pulling the trigger at the end of that push. So it's like the decision of when to shoot is taken away. It's all just part of that moment, if that makes any sense. So whether you're aiming down the barrel of your gun or a um, point and shoot style diver, the poking technique is going to help improve your shots. It's going to help improve your accuracy. 100% guaranteed. I guess this is just a small part of an overall way of hunting. It's the full stop at the end of that hunt. So for me, I try to remember just two things. Keep my gun in and at the right moment, poke through the fish and release the shot. Everything else that happens in between will just flow. You'll start to look for the right moment to extend your gun out. Sometimes it's going to be a point and shoot style shot, other times you're going to have loads of time to spare and you're going to be lining up down the barrel of your gun. But finish off the moment by focusing on the spot in the fish you want the shaft to land. Push the shaft through the spot and let your shaft fly. Like I've said in this and so many other videos, confidence is a key to shooting straight. The poke and shoot technique can really help you build confidence um, by helping you commit to your shots and making those shots decisive and functional. My advice is that you get into a pool or go and shoot some fish for the pot. Practice applying various techniques that will help you build your confidence. The great thing is that the poke and shoot, you can practice this in a pool. Set up a target and practice this taking those shots and um, start off close with a small gun and you'll be amazed at how easy it is to master this technique. So just a quick recap. It doesn't matter whether you're aiming down your gun or shooting from the hip or even a combination of both. Just remember to keep your gun in for as long as possible. Try and anticipate when to take the shot. And when you do, act decisively and focus on the spot you want the shaft to land. So whether you're aiming down the gun or not, push forward with the gun, extending the shaft through the spot on the fish you are focusing on and let that shaft fly. This way you will ensure that your, um, both your wrist, elbow and shoulder are all engaged and your shot will be on the exact point on the fish that you want um, the shaft to land with all the power and accuracy your gun can produce because there'll be um, no absorption of the recoil at all because everything is engaged. I hope that you found this video really helpful. So give it a go, let me know how it goes in the comments below. If this is one of the first times you're watching one of my videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I try to get videos up um, around about once a month or so. Um, so don't miss out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.